Hello everybody. Um, welcome to the Cloud Boff. Um, here are some of the members of the Cloud team as, as exists at the moment. There's a bunch more people who couldn't make it to Taiwan this year. Um, and due to the, um, the, the sheer number of time zones between us and them, unfortunately, they're probably not going to be in ISC either. But, you know, they're with us in spirit at least. Um, so, we'll get on to other things in a moment, um, but I will ask a couple of quick questions first. But who here has actually used any of the Debian Cloud images? Woo, we have users, awesome. Um, and did they work okay for you? Yeah? Ish? Okay. Um, so, what we want to go through today um, is a quick discussion of what we've um, done in the last year or so um, and what our plans are for the, I guess, for the coming year. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. It's like a lot of things in Debian, the work is basically open ended. Um, we are still continuing to try and work together to improve things feedback on um, what people ha are finding with the images we're making and obviously offers of more help are always welcome. Um, this is very much a boff, this is not a presentation, although we have a whole bunch of us here it's just because there's a bunch of people doing work in this area. Please don't hesitate to ask questions or you know um, pass your thoughts on um, as and when. I said, this is not a presentation, this is a conversation. Okay? So, Tomas, you have the agenda. Yes, so uh, let's start a bit with status updates, what we did. Uh, we got sprint in uh, Seattle uh, last October or November, which got even mentioned by DPL. Yeah. Uh, there we were working on uh, moving uh, our build systems to FAI mostly, which is still work in progress. And on testing of images, we have some scripts, but they are not yet integrated fully into our build process and not, are not working yet on all uh, cloud providers. So this is also something to do. Uh, in the meantime, we also move to Salsa, all, all of our repositories. Uh, yeah. Uh, I became DD and I got access to Casulana, so I can now run those tests to, uh, uh, that, that we work on in Seattle. Helen oh, start, is starting opening NM process. So we will probably got more and more members who have access to restricted Debian machines and we can work on uh, more, uh, more uh, basically more automated, more, uh, bulletproof uh, test. Because we also moved to uh, to Salsa, we should probably start uh, thinking about uh, more CI, CD process of building those images. More automation, less human interaction. So, um, one of the things that we've been um, doing is getting together at these sprints. Um, so far, they've been hosted by the big cloud platforms. We've had two sprints in Seattle so far. Uh, the first hosted by Google, and then we were hosted by my, the Microsoft, Microsoft Azure team last year. Uh, we're hoping to have another sprint um, this autumn. Um, the folks at DigitalOcean offered to host us last year, and we're just starting to organize logistics for that. Um, one of the really warming things, one of the really great things about working in this team is uh, we can see that um, a lot of companies are not just consuming what we do, but they're actively getting involved. So we have people um, inside Amazon, inside Microsoft, inside Google who are directly working with us on producing and testing um, official Debian cloud images. Uh, and that's a really, really nice thing to see. Yeah, I, oops, so loud. <laughs> uh, I just want to give a little bit of background um, for the people who doesn't really know what we are doing, so what we want to achieve. Uh, so we want to build official Debian image for uh, the cloud providers. So that 
we trust, we as, co as a community, and uh, signed by Debian, <coughs> going through the um, QA uh, from Debian with a lot of testing, uh, so users can trust this image. Uh, so to achieve this, um, we need an infrastructure to build all these images, and this infrastructure is going to be built in a machine called Casulana, is uh, what he mentioned. Um, and we also need the testing infrastructure. Um, so the current planning for testing is analyzing the image, the image aesthetically, um, mounting it, deploying it in a local machine, then deploying in the providers um, to check if everything works well. So we have uh, already planned how to um, implement those infrastructure, uh, but it's um, work in progress yet. Yeah. One other area where we made progress in the past year is that there is now a cloud flavor in the kernel, so there is an additional kernel image uh, Debian package that um, has a uh, a lot of uh, for cloud providers not needed uh, parts removed from the kconfig file. So for example, PCMCIA is, I think, is removed, uh, some uh, video camera stuff and so on, which makes booting the machine faster uh, on the cloud provider side uh, and, and, the image, uh, and makes the images smaller, though this is uh, something that also got accepted by the kernel team and by FTP master to have an additional package. Okay, uh, so what images are the cloud team responsible for? Like, do you also uh, are maintaining the Docker images and the Vagrant images? Um, no, it's something that so far, I'll admit, we've been not great at uh, talking to the folks who, who are building those. Right. Um, I keep on mentioning it, and I must admit, I actually need to actually you know, to to talk to these, talk to people, sit down with them, and and work out um, is how much overlap there is with what we're, they're doing, what we're doing, and does it make sense to actually collaborate more? Yes, but uh, are these images being maintained by Debian people right now? Just uh, from not they are not in the team, is that right? So it used to be that the Docker image was made by Paul Tag. Yes. I'm not sure if, if it's still the case. And for the Vagrant images, Emmanuel is uh, building them. And we also have the file configuration for Vagrant images. OK, thank you. And it's precisely because you have to ask that question that we need to make official images, right? <laughs> So one of the reasons that the cloud team even started um, having these discussions and trying to work together was that very reason. Um, over the last few years, obviously, as use of the cloud, use of uh, containers has, has taken off a huge amount. Um, we've had people come to us asking exactly those questions. So um, inside Amazon or inside uh, Google or whatever, I can see these images that claim to be Debian. Um, how do I know it's Debian? How do I know it doesn't have malware included? Um, that's one of the reasons why we're trying to do this. We, we want to make sure that people can find, easily find, uh, the official images that are blessed by the, by the Debian cloud team and also blessed by the providers where they're running to make sure that A, the images are safe, clean. You, know, you don't want to have lots and lots of random non-free stuff included, even if it's not malware. Um, but equally, you want it to behave well, you want it to interact well with the platform it's running on, so you get good performance, so, you know, you get all the features that you need. Yeah, and the cloud providers acknowledged and understood that uh, it is crucial to the project that, or also to their customers, that um, they are providing images that the community can trust is real Debian So on top of, obviously, the, the three uh, big commercial cloud, cloud platforms we've already mentioned, 
Um, we've been making uh, OpenStack images for a very long time using a lot of the work that Zigo has, has done. Uh, we have those for AMD64 and also for ARM64, uh, which is something that I'm quite happy with, speaking as an ARM employee. Uh, I, I very much... <coughs> Sorry, I very much would like to add the PPC EL64. The only issue is that I don't have access to such a cloud to be able to test it. So this is a bottle in the in the sea. If you know someone at IBM or another company that has a cloud on PPC EL64, please get in touch. Yeah. You know, obviously we want to provide images that are useful on every platform. Were they useful? Um, so if there are any other platforms, any other providers that we don't provide stuff for, um, please talk to us. Um, we know that there are many, many more than just the three or four that we've mentioned so far, um, but you know, we need to know about them, we need to work with people, and we need to make things happen. Okay, do we move to now FAI and st status of images? Yeah. So, um, where we started from was that um, each different uh, cloud image was built using its own you know, special Snowflake tooling. Um, it's a matter of record in Debian. We have far too many different image building tools. I remember Wiku um, told us, was it 11, 12 that you found in your, for your talk in Heidelberg? Sorry? And we keep getting new Oh, yeah. Ones. And we keep getting new ones. Um, one of the things that we, we've agreed um, within the cloud team is we don't want to carry on using different tools for different images because fundamentally the similarities between our images are much more than the differences. We want to be, be able to provide something that is common that will give you the same feature set as closely as possible across any platform that you run it on. There will be differences, for example, there's no point running the Microsoft WA agent in OpenStack. There's no point running the Google tools if you're running on, you know, um, on Azure. Um, we want to make sure that um, also other people can take what we have and either derive their own images from them or use the configuration that we've come up with as a good base and either build their own images, extend, you know, share their own images. Obviously, Debian is free software. We want people to go away and do their own work on top of it. That's, that's the whole point. So after a lot of discussion at the first cloud sprint we had 18 months ago, we, we basically agreed we would um, be working together on trying to build all our images using FAI, which is in, an increasingly, I guess, different area from where FAI started. So it's not just fully automated installation. We're now generating images. Um, and it, the, the nice features of FAI are that you can, you have your own configuration, which is separate from the scripts that build things. So we can then easily publish the configurations that we have. Um, they're all free, obviously. Um, they're easy for the people to then derive from. Um, and I think we're basically happy with it. We haven't yet quite got to the stage where all of our images are built that way, but it, you know, it's work in progress. Uh, basically, the uh, advantage of FAI is that uh, there are classes, so we, we have some base classes for Pepe and then base classes for cloud image, and then we are adding class for Amazon, for Azure, for whatever else, and it just adds or removes packages that are needed or not, not needed. So, so th this is also good for people who want to build their own images. They can take our set of classes and just add new, add new variants or something. Um, I want to correct a little bit. We are on the stage that we can build the images with SPY. The only thing that is missing is um, automatic continuous integration that the images are built on the Debian machine. So if you want to give it a try and want to build an image, you can just get the tools, the configuration, and do this on your own. And also, like a lot of volunteer projects, the other thing we're missing is good documentation about how all of this works. Um, that's the, if anybody does want to help right now, right today, that would be an awesome thing, would be to dive in with docs.
Oh, I didn't have a question. I was just raising my hand to say, let's hang out together later today, and I like writing documentation. Be careful admitting that you'll get. Well, actually, you might get lots of friends. <laughs> So that's the state of play of where we are today. As I said, we're hoping to organize another cloud sprint for probably is it November we're looking at. October. So October, November this year. I said DigitalOcean offered to host um, at their offices in New York. Um, we've not really started organizing it fully yet. More details will be coming out on the mailing list and whatever shortly. Um, and we have the beginnings of an agenda being worked out. We got together last night. Um, there will be more and more things that we, need to, that we need to talk about and work on when we get together for a few days. We do tend to work very well in the sprints, and I must admit, not quite so well, or not quite so publicly well outside of the sprints. Um, one of the things I'd like to have us do is, is be a bit more active publicly so that everyone else can see what work is going on, and you know, I liked in Debian, if, if not just to see things being done, but to have things being very visibly done. It's a great way of building a team. It's a great way of getting more people interested and getting more people involved. So, so if we were to wrap up this first section with some comments, the first one is that we moved everything to uh, Salsa. Uh, we don't have CI turned on the way we want, but when we do. Uh, it can be watching Git repos and be pushing to Kazulana for build. Kazulana is a monster machine that Debian bought 18 months ago or so, and we got fully up and running at the last sprint. Um, and it's where we build all the images. So although the providers are offering us VMs and are encouraging us to build on their infrastructure, we maintain the principle that we build our images on infrastructure that we control. Um, and, uh, and I guess the last piece was we're interested in the ability to push images to a variety of providers. So right now we only push to three providers. We do it kind of in a manual way and we could tie that in at the end of the CI process after test and validation. So if I got correctly, basically you would want to not only have continuous integration for the images, but actually also continuous deployment to all those cloud providers uh, whenever something passes QA and we decide that, yes, this is the new thing we want to release. That's yeah. really good to hear, actually. Sure. Exactly that. So, of course, what we, you know, we will have you know, the stable releases that go out each time we do a, you know, a new stable release, but we'll also have um, regular updates with security things happening. We'll also have regular, whether that's daily, weekly, whatever builds going out. Once we have a proper CI pipeline going where, you know, builds are triggered when changes happen, what we will want to do is, of course, is run our own QA, and then we can push to the, to the various platforms. Each of the platforms have their own extra QA, um, you know, infrastructure, some of which is huge in terms of what things do. It can take a couple of days for an image to go through and, and be, be tested fully. So, you know, obviously, we will be providing our images, we'll be pushing into their um, test pipeline, and then things should come out, um, you know, fully tested, fully approved, and ready to go. Yeah, currently, I think we provide for, at least for OpenStack and Azure, we are providing daily images. We, weekly of testing, yeah. and, and each time yeah, and each time there is there are updates uh, on either the main archive or the security archive. The images get rebuilt, and we publish them again. Yeah, and I think we agreed to have um, weekly uh, builds for the images uh, for testing, and um, daily builds, uh, but not official. Uh, for Debian, only for um, CI to check if everything's okay. So if we detect <coughs> something is wrong, we can notify <coughs> it quickly and um, yeah, fix the bugs as fast as possible. Is is there some kind of uh, roadmap or dashboard where I can see the current status of all of these images? No. 
No, um, okay, yes. <laughs> not, not an overview for all the images, at least. Okay. Um, I know for Azure, for example, that there is Azure build.debian.net, uh, which has a Jenkins uh, running, which uh, shows the, the latest logs and uh, the, the download, downloadable daily images. I think for OpenStack, just yeah. download from Casilana. Patterson. Yes, I, I mean, I, I would like to contribute to the team, but I was thinking, like, where to start? Like, is there some place where I can get a... Yes. So for the big uh, four providers, uh, Amazon, Google, uh, and whatnot, so we, we will push to them, but for people doing OpenStack things, uh, I would very much like to see somewhere where uh, cloud, public cloud providers and whatnot could register themselves and get either a trigger or an image push to their cloud. So uh, we would need to do some programming with a web interface where people can register these kind of things. And there, if you want to volunteer doing that, that would be awesome. Right. And the other place where we've um, we've had a volunteer whose name I can't remember because sorry, I'm rubbish has already started working on an image finder. Um, so that will be something where you can go and, if you just know you want a Debian image, which includes the following features, that you would be able to then go and find out, say, the uh, AWS ID for it, or find uh, where, where to grab it, if, if for whichever region you're on in, in you know, Google Cloud Engine or whatever. Um, so it's significantly harder than it should be, apparently, to find the official Debian images and make sure that you're using the thing you think you are. Um, so an image finder like that is also a good way to help. I know Ubuntu have one, and we have people looking at what they do. We could do something similar, but we don't have to follow them. It's, it's a good way to dive in and get started. Uh I reached out to them and they are saying that they will not publish their, uh, or make their code public for the image finder because for reasons. Uh, one thing that um, it would be really nice to have uh, volunteers to work is um, testing infrastructure because right now we have some code but it's a code that we did in two days, three days. Uh, so it's really basic. We are not n near what we want to achieve, all the staging of tests we want to achieve, and also we need that all of this needs to be integrated in a way, um, be coded in a way that is easily integrated with all the infrastructure so we can trigger um, the CI tests so easily. And, and I think uh, this is like, first phase before uh, yeah, moving to, to other uh, features, uh, and this would be uh, really helpful. Uh, basically, the testing will be non-trivial because we need to build image, then we need to check it statically, then we need to run it uh, on some basic tests on Debian machine, so we can trust it. Then, if it passes, we need to upload it to particular cloud providers and test that it runs on Amazon, that it's run on Google, and for example on Amazon that we can enable this enhanced networking on Google that we can, I don't know, attach some some high performance, uh, whatever. So, so, so it will be need to be multi-staging, it will need, and it will need to be integrated well into our building process and our uh, CI process. So we cannot use basic, uh, uh, basic Salsa CI because it's just one step and quite limited. So, so we have some plans, but we need to first document them a bit, discuss, and probably it will be multi, um, uh, multi staging stuff. Yeah, but for those who are looking on what we agreed, what the test set should look like, there is a Gobi document. Well, there are docu Gobi documents from uh, the sprint in 2016 and 2017, and um, the test suite that uh, Tomasz and Helm worked on, um, basically uh, the set on tests that we agreed that are nowadays documented in the in the Gobi um, 
collaboration um, editing. We framework. yeah we also have some pictures, some diagrams explain. So if you want to know more, I can uh, send it to you and explain it to you. Um, yeah. And also uh, another thing is that we, we use a file tool to build images, but we also want to um, isolate building. So we have to build a virtual machine, ex execute file inside it, generate the built images, and uh, also manage all those virtual machines. So I don't think we have it yet. I didn't, that was my question. Is anybody already doing the building of the images in a clean uh, virtual machine or not yet so currently we all use fai just on our uh, own computer yeah. so then there's a script in the um, git repository called launch kvm.sh uh, this was done by ben from digital and i think we should have a look if it's okay and try to use it. So, but w what you can do is you can get our repository and run FAI on your own machine. Yeah. Uh, so this is still in pro in progress. Uh, basically, uh, previous uh, previous scripts like Booster Visit and so on, we were running this on clean a AWS machines, but because we decided to move to FAI, we need to polish some corners and... Uh, so, uh, since you mentioned that uh, I can run uh, FAI on my own uh, machine, like how much resources do I need to be able to run those builds? And the answer to that is not a huge amount. You know, it's, it's essentially doing the equivalent, doing the bootstrap and tweaks around it. Um, so you need basically to have the space for your, for your image you need to have sufficient memory and kernel to do it. Obviously, the bigger, the faster the machine, the faster it will go. But you know, that's not you know. Don't worry too much about resources. Yeah. Okay. So let's discuss maybe these vendor agents and stuff. Or do we have something? So uh, basically, uh, we are now building our own images. But to fully utilize uh, cloud providers, there is need to, to have some agents, so dem some demos running on, uh, running on uh, virtual machine in cloud providers. They, their functionality differ on different cloud providers. So for example, on Amazon, there is no particular need to, need to have it. it. It will work without, without any agent, but then we won't have uh, detailed uh, monitoring. We won't have some uh, some ability to run uh, EC2 run command or something like this. We won't have this uh, SNM something. I don't remember what, what's what's the meaning behind it. But basically, this is advanced management of machines. On Google, on the other hand, uh, we need to have some agent to to be able to inject SSH key to login into it. Uh, I'm not sure what's the status on Azure, but I guess this is similar. So Vala is uh, currently already in Debian stable in a, in a, uh, and in the images. Um, uh, it's also used for getting the SSH keys into the machines, yeah. getting the monitoring, um, or getting information back into the Azure monitoring uh, suites and so on. Um, yeah. So basically, the the status differs between uh, between uh, agents for different uh, different uh, environments. It looks like for Microsoft there is the best situation. Uh, Google has uh, packages, but in their own repository, and because there are some problems with uh, DFSG and yeah. quality so, of packages. Yeah. So one of the things that we've been telling all of the uh, platform providers. Um, like and most people are understanding this is that obviously if their agents are going to be in, a, in official Debian images, they need to meet Debian standards. So that's, um, they need to be DFSG free, obviously. They also need to be in the main Debian archive. We are not going to build images and put Debian's you know, seal on them if they're pulling in things that are not already in the archive because, well, it's not Debian that way, is it? So 
that does then lead to some tension um, that um, some, of the, some of the providers want to have quite frequent updates to the tools inside their images. And that can, can be a bit fought if it means that they want you know, potentially major updates inside Debian Stable. But that's a, that's a discussion that's ongoing. The very first thing that must happen is they've got to be in the archive and they've got to be maintained. Yeah, but we also managed uh, together with the um, release team and stable release team to get uh, a, at least the uh, Vala agent for Azure updated uh, in, a stable re in a stable point release, um, mainly to cover um, the uh, Azure stack, which is an on-premise Azure um, um, to, to support that kind of new hardware. Um, and we also had some discussion with a stable release team regarding other agents. Um, as they are leaf packages, they are probably not going to break um, most of end users' uh, installations. So have it, yeah, as, as, as agreed with the release team, so long as the updates to the agents are reasonable, then there shouldn't be a problem with these things going in. Um, but, you know, who defines reasonable? You know, it, it needs um, some trust um, on, you know, of what we're doing and of what the cloud providers are doing to make sure that, you know, the newest agent doesn't do bad things, you know, it's not going to be very buggy. So one of the things that will help on that, of course, is as we boost our own um, you know, CI, if we're doing a lot more testing on all of our images, we will be able to verify that a new, that a, you know, a new version of an agent isn't going to break things. Uh, how is Ubuntu solving this problem? Are they shipping non-free software? <coughs> and the, the frequent updates problem also? You know, that's a very good question. I honestly don't know. Um, Ubuntu, in my experience, tend to be a bit more open to doing um, less free things yes. when it makes commercial sense. But I haven't looked, so I, I you know, if if you if you if you could go and have a look and tell us, that would be wonderful. So, Thomas, what was next on the list? Uh, next. We are almost done. Let me check. Uh, that's the updates. So, um, uh, as you probably noticed, there is much work in progress. Uh, we need, as Steve pointed, we need to have it more public. So we intend to uh, to have some. Uh, status updates on our mailing list. Uh, basically, we have mailing list, so we, you can subscribe to it. Uh. So yes, we've got the Debian Cloud mailing list. We've got the Debian Cloud IRC channel, where at least most of us are idling. Um, we do need to be more public, though. And ditto, we need, uh, you know, as I said, we need to be have better docs. A to help people to see what we've done, and B to tell people how they can help and how how they can get more involved. Um, I promise faithfully that we're going to be doing more of that in the, ne in the next year. If nothing else, I'm going to make it my task at the Cloud Sprint to get a lot, well, to get a lot more of that organized. Yeah, and if you want a hands-on, uh, probably uh, I've seen at least one cl cloud provider being here in the room, um, well, persons from one cloud provider in the room. Um, I'm willing to give you a hands on on, uh, on Azure platform. Um, probably um, uh, Sigo can also help people to show uh, the images on OpenStack, I guess. One question, is there anybody interested in building their own cloud image and want to use the tools? But then, okay, just um, if you start and if you have any problems with Phi, um, I would suggest you could also uh, join the Debian Cloud ISC. Uh, I just did. Uh, <laughs> what? I did about a minute ago. Okay. And, in, and then uh, if there are some, and I would guess in the beginning there may be some question related to FAI and 
then I can help you. Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm basically building my own uh, VM images automatically when I uh, provision new VMs, but it's a very janky process that uh, basically involves building an initramfs uh, blob that has a precede file baked into it, and yeah, I mean at least it's automated. But uh, where I work, we use OpenStack massively, and there is a possibility to start creating our own image of for OpenStack. So one of the things that we started at the last sprint was a conversation about formalizing our relationship, Debian probably through SPI with the cloud providers, so that uh, our images can be found in <coughs> the marketplace, for example. So instead of finding in the public area, you can find it in the AWS marketplace. So we hope to con not conclude, but continue that conversation this fall and understand the pros and cons of such, a, such an agreement with the cloud provider and, uh, and the availability of the images to people who want to use them and how they can be found. So one thing is the image finder, the other one is actually being in the marketplace. For Azure, we are listed in their marketplace. Uh, yeah, and it depends heavily on the platform. And also, Helen already partially mentioned it, uh, we still have in flux our management of accounts and access to this cloud because basically we need to have our own official Debian account on different providers and we need to be able to manage uh, users so I can do something, publish images, but so, some, some, uh, so, so basically we, we need accounts for users, for real people, and we need accounts for uh, or roles. Uh, to, to so machines can automatically publish something. So this is also still uh, something that we are working on. Uh. Yeah, but I think we discussed that last year with Steve uh, extensively, and he agreed to hand out accounts for publishing for the. I think that was everything we had on our agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure, and we've just seen 10 minutes on. So, are there any, any more questions, people? Have any more comments? Do we have any more volunteers who want to come in and spend the rest of their lives making Debian cloud images great? Oh, damn, I was hoping we'd get somebody. So, what will happen in the next months that I know of is that the uh, the kernel, uh, kernel cloud image will be further tweaked. Um, we also will um, hopefully see the um, um, feedback from the various cloud providers that those uh, kernel images are working properly on all cloud pro uh, platforms. Um, and um, maybe there are even more things that we can disable uh, in kconfig to uh, to get faster booting process first i'm i'm really sorry for monopolizing the mic but since you mentioned uh, the um, uh, kernel package for uh, cloud being uh, tweaked further uh, I, I was kind of curious, how much difference did you actually notice in like, lightening the kernels that we ship to, uh, f in uh, VM images? Um, the boot time uh, is like, went down like quite, quite much, like half of the boot time only. Oh, that's actually a lot. Yeah, we, we removed a lot of things that are not present yeah. on cloud platforms. Like, uh, also, uh, network stacks that we do not need, like... Yeah, uh, and realize I have a quick question. Um, is it, uh, um, is, for instance, installing security updates on the first boot of a VM something that is done currently? And Cloud did it does that for you? Okay. So it does up get update, up get this upgrade when you boot normally? So this is an outstanding question though. Um, 
some of the uh, cloud providers want all the images to do unattended upgrades or similar to make sure that images that are running are as secure as they possibly can be. Obviously, if you're hosting, say, 100,000 Debian installations, you will really care if there's, a, if there's a, a root security hole that is working its way across your entire campus. Uh, corpus, sorry. Um, of course, there are also potential downsides to doing the unattended upgrades. Of course, that say you know your database server, you know for your website, suddenly in the middle of in the middle of your trading day decides, no, no, I need to do a Postgres update, and your site goes away. You know, it's it's there is no good single answer. It's yeah. an ongoing discussion. Yeah, that's why I've asked about on first boot because yeah, that's we, an easier decision. Yeah, we are. Whether uh, Steve uh, brought up the discussion during um, during last sprint and also dr uh, after the lap, uh, past sprint on the Debian develop mailing list, if we should uh, enable uh, unattended boot per default on our images, not even for uh, cloud images, but also f so general, more generally. The Debian security team don't like unattended upgrades. Um, there are apparently they see quite substantial problems with it, with the design and how it works. Um, I haven't spent enough time yet looking into it to agree or disagree. I do think that we need to come up distro-wide with a better security policy. You know, I mean, I'm sure all of us as you know, responsible admins of our own systems are making sure we're always patched. We should make it easier for our users to get that too. I think the problem is that unattended upgrades happens at random times and you really want to run it on control times. So you would need some kind of, say, staged update that you can say that uh, now is the time to update a handful of hosts and find out if it works and then put it on to the others. It's a trouble. Yeah. We don't really know who should be the one who controls these uh, staged updates. Sure. So there's all kinds of config that can be done. Actually, uh, Tolef is coming. Do we know what the other uh, OS providers do, like Fedora and Arc and so on? I know that CoreOS does uh, automatic updates and reboots, but I have no idea about other Linux distros. Um, Ubuntu does definitely. Um, I, I'm told that Fedora have something similar. I don't know how well it works or any details, I'm afraid. Uh, Amazon. Uh they have their own distribution, they run uh, update on, uh, on, on restart. Yeah, sure. So on restart, it's great, but of course, there's a, again, this varies massively by use cases. So for people who are running, you know, as I said, your da the database server for, the, for their you know, e-commerce e site, they'll be running, uh, they'll have very long running uh, cloud images, which they will want to manage totally. Equally, we also have a lot of people where um, an, a VM literally might be running for 30 seconds, five minutes or so, where they don't care. What actually we've had feedback from, I mean, the Google folks in particular were pushing for this, and this is one of the reasons why we, you know, we care so much, is they care if a system takes 10 seconds to boot instead of five seconds to boot for exactly those people. So they don't want cloud in it. Um, taking time at startup because you know installing a couple of updates suddenly means your boot time has tripled. Um, now again, for those of us running a laptop or running a server at home, it's like, who cares about five seconds? But if you're running spawning ten thousand images and you know to do a very simple thing and then you want them to go away again, five seconds times ten thousand adds up. Um, yeah. Another thing is that when you have a very large deployment, let's say you mentioned 10,000 VMs, just imagine 10,000 VMs doing update this upgrade at the same time on your local mirror. That can be a lot of resources too. I think we, we need to support all these different schemes to do it at reboot and so on, but I would guess it's not... Uh, special cloud problem, but how Debian could support all these different kinds of when to do the updates. So I, I have a question. 
besides the, the big cloud providers, Google, Amazon, Azure, uh, are there any cl other cloud providers that you would like to see in the beginning that Debian supports and where we should upload official images? Just, just shout the names of the cloud providers. We use uh, software at work, so I would actually like that to be supported. Gandhi.net currently ships extremely janky images, and it would be actually quite nice to have properly supported ones. Okay. I, I just say that there are a lot of Chinese uh, colleagues here. I know that um, Alibaba also have very, Alibaba and Tencent in China, they have very popular uh, cloud platform being used by millions of people. If the colleagues here can connect us to their people, perhaps. Actually, I'm using Alibaba, which is called Aliyun, and maybe Tom already know that. Alibaba is very special because they, uh, they cut down something in the Dubai and install something called Alidun, which called program yet last year. Maybe something, somebody heard of that. Uh, so I don't think they will accept uh, some image from Divan official report. But they do have such a thing. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you have contacts in Hangzhou with people from uh, Ali Yun that we can could get in touch with? No, but uh, I'm keeping in touch with them so I can contact with them. If you want to talk to them, okay, I, will be, uh, I can be helped. Uh, but the problem is Ali Yun has a one option uh, which is default uh, on, that is enhanced. By the by, this option, they will install something into the into your system, which I believe it will harm for the whole system. It caused problem last year. Um, this is for security. Uh, officially or literally, this is for security. Uh, but I trust it has something to do with other stuff, which I could not say. Okay. But, but, but I guess even if they install something, um, we, we cannot do anything against it. Yeah. And, but, but we still can provide an official Debian image that the users can use. So, so to go back on the topic of automatic upgrades, uh, I'm slightly worried that what we'll run into is something not entirely different to uh, what we do by installing recommends automatically. Where lots of people then just end up turning it off and I don't think that would be a very helpful situation. So maybe what we could actually do is is provide either some flag you can set through cloud init which it, which basically sets a policy or even provide different images so we provide a short-lived image which I mean we can do something really crude like it will do power off after 24 hours or like some, something like that, or we could do uh, like some, some other mechanism to say you shouldn't be running this on long term, and then it's, it's up to, to users to do whatever they want. Hi, so I'm Kay, I'm the, the person from one of the cloud providers. <laughs> I work at Microsoft. Um, so I, just a quick note on this. So one thing that we see a lot um, is that customers do, we. Um, for our internal Microsoft services, we have an image that we base off of, and um, automatic updates or, or unattended updates are turned on in that, and most of the people who use that image turn off unattended updates um, because it breaks them during production and uh, they need to be able to test and deploy on their, uh, on their own time frame. And so I think that have, making it easy to create custom images is, is really the best answer to this. So people can create, you know, start with you know, whatever the, the default is and then create their own and they have full control yeah, over it. Absolutely. It's, it's what we need to do. It's what we want to do. Anyway, I've been told by the video team we are out of time. So thank you everybody for coming along. I hope that was useful and interesting. Um, please, if you want to know more, if you want to join in, if you really want to help, 
catch us either here this week or join the Debian Cloud IRC and mailing list. Um, and we will, you know, we will be keeping you updated there. Thank you very much. <laughs>